Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Donna Govender, Health Promotions Manager at the Heart and Stroke Foundation South Africa. I'm very delighted to be here again with Dr. Tula to talk about cardiovascular disease, including heart disease and strokes this morning. Morning, Donna. Morning, Dr. Tula. How are you doing? I'm very well, and how are you? I'm good, thanks. It's such a pleasure to have you back again. Um, we Thank celebrate you so it. much. Um, okay, this time around, we're celebrating 42 years, and our conversation will just rotate around that milestone and the new campaign that's been launched. So um, on the 29th of September, which was last month, it was um, World Heart Day. The Heart and Stroke Foundation um, turned 42, which is quite a milestone. Congratulations on that. Um, can you just tell us a bit on the journey, because it must have taken a lot to get to 42 years. Yes, thank you so much. And we are so proud to be on this journey, celebrating our legacy project and, um, you know, our 42nd anniversary as a non-government health organization. And the Heart and Stroke Foundation's main aim, uh, we, we try to reduce the incidence of cardiovascular disease in our country. That, is, that is includes both strokes and heart disease, and we play a leading role in the fight in the preventable, preventable heart and stroke disease. And, the, and we were established in 1980, and we are turning, we have turned 42 years this year. It's yeah. a proud moment. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's very important because as a non-government organization, um, we are very reliant on external funding uh, to sustain the work that we carry out in communities that are under-resourced. Uh, yeah. These services are free and we uh, continue we'll, we will continue to do that uh, you know with uh, with the support of our partners and like-minded organizations as well yeah that's quite exceptional and what is the legacy campaign that's recently been launched what is it about yes i think throughout the uh, province we had uh, events celebrating the legacy campaign. In yeah. Kozum Natal, we had a very exciting uh, project uh, sponsored by DUT and was held at um, Coastlands in Durban. And we had brilliant speakers from the Department of Health, Civil Society. We had our CEO, Professor Pamela Naidu, travel mm -hmm. down to Durban mm -hmm. to be part of the program as well. And then we had important people that have played a major role in this journey. Yeah. You know, we're looking at uh, business partners like Life Healthcare. We're looking at uh, DUT, of course, the tertiary institution that helped us for many, for many, many moons yeah. uh, to bring about healthy lifestyles. And I think, Nokatula, if you look at young adults today, our students, I think, um, you know, when I had a meeting and it was uh, very evident mm -hmm. that we need to create awareness, we need to bring about um, education uh, projects, campaigns, mass campaigns. And, you know, I think we've achieved this over the many years. Yeah. And in Cape Town, we had a wonderful event at the Artscape uh, Theatre. Um, and we had brilliant speakers there as well. And so in George as well, in um, Hebeha, as well as Kauteng. So all of these events um, celebrated the 42 years in the various provinces and also, you know, celebrating people that have been with us for many, many years. And we're hoping that, you know what, they will continue to support us so that we can um, make a big difference in the lives of many people in South Africa who do not have access to medical care. You know, only 30% of South Africans have medical care and 70% of the population depend on uh, public health and yeah. which do not focus a lot on non-communicable diseases. Yeah. So this is where we play a major role in terms of our health promotion activities, um, health talks, health risk assessments, which includes blood pressure testing, sugar, glucose, as well as cholesterol and BMI. Mm. And I mean, Donna, Reaching 42, it is not an easy, it's not an easy achievement. It, I'm sure the journey was not as simple. There's been challenges. So what are some of the challenges that you have encountered as a foundation? Um, you are very correct. And it's a brilliant question as well, because being an NGO, you are reliant on external funding. Yeah. And you know that, you know, 
COVID, during COVID, many companies closed down and that impacted on funding as well to the foundation. And we do not get any funding from the government because we are an NGO, but we work closely with the government on certain policy uh, uh, programs, etc. But I think, you know, funding has been a, a, a problem because, you know, I think with any organization, you need funds to carry out your work and I think that's one of the challenges and also the Heart and Stroke Foundation is um, you know we don't have too many staff we try to work with a very very uh, uh, small complement of staff and there as well you know we look at volunteers who can help us so we we recruit volunteers from all walks of life to help the foundation during this journey and I think basically also um, you know we've also had unrest that was uh, also a major cause where we couldn't go out into the community some of the areas were um you know uh, um, no-go areas so that also impacts on, on the work of the foundation but yeah. i think the important thing Lokotula, we became relevant during these times because we very quickly adapted to our virtual platforms and this is where we continued um uh, creating awareness and 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 engaging with our communities more so that we don't so that people still take care of the health because you know during COVID when we had all the um, comorbidities like hypertension, diabetes, people with cardiovascular incidents, they had worse outcomes, you know. So we continue during that time virtual platforms and we still are doing that and we're trying to reach many people as possible in terms of um, you know uh, taking care of themselves looking at eating healthy and a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. because I think it all it all depends on on the individual because you know uh, it's an individual's choice but I think by creating the awareness giving the information it's not the diabetes that kills or the high blood pressure that kills it's not having the correct information and the heart foundation has played a huge role during this time um, speaking virtually to our, our audiences uh, about still taking care of your health, taking your medication timelessly, correctly as prescribed by the doctor, eating healthy. And, one, and we are very proud, uh, Nokatula, as well. You know, we have the Heart and Stroke Foundation's Heart Mark Endorsement Program, which assists consumer, consumers to identify foods that are healthier. For example, they all are um, tested to have less salt, less sugar, less cholesterol, less saturated fats, mm -hmm. and high in fiber. So I think, you know, advocating um, um, uh, the information to our, our communities has been very, very vital during this time. So, mm -hmm. and also, you know, we have um, radio stations that have been fantastic, all the radio stations. They've helped us during this time. You know, uh, there's lots of people out who don't have TV, they don't have access to community papers as well as mainstream papers. Yeah. Um, uh, in season fruit and vegetables, we recommend to have uh, lots of fruit and vegetables and um, and, and and lots of legumes and uh, uh, chickpeas and uh, um, lots of fats that are healthy. You know the healthier fats as well. So the hot mark logo helps our consumers to make healthier choices so this is the kind of um, you know uh, engagement we had with our communities because you know if you look at the health promotions program we conduct health risk assessments during this time when we couldn't go to the communities we um, spoke about uh, healthy lifestyle healthy lifestyle behaviors where people at home can still make little small changes mm -hmm. and if all of us made a small change towards the heart, our heart and brain health, we are moving in the right direction. So that was our focus, to focus and continue that engagement. That's brilliant, Donna. And um, so for anyone who's suffering with a heart condition at home or anyone that wants to contribute to the foundation, how do they get involved? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear the Nokatula. We've got an unstable internet. So I was asking um, if anyone has a heart or a stroke um, at home or anyone that wants to contribute to the foundation, how do they get involved? 
Oh, that is fantastic. Um, because they can visit our website, which is www.heartfoundation.co.za. We also had our have our number, our head office number, 21 Four double two one five eight six, and you know you can call in and you can make some inquiries. But also we have a donor page, you know, on our website. Yeah. You know, you can get all the information there, and we will welcome that because I think we encourage people to donate to the foundation so that we can continue and expand our work, especially in the under-resourced areas where people do not have access to information as well as medical care as well. Absolutely. And lastly, Donna, um, what can we look forward to from the foundation? Yes, I think um, during World Stroke Day, which is on the 29th of October, we will be lighting up in green um, certain companies, uh, um, institutions, um, shopping malls. We, we're looking at support from them so that we all can support this initiative and, and you know, uh, increase the awareness, expand the awareness so that people become aware that, you know, stroke is, is a medical condition and you need to get help. It is important. Um, you know, there's a lot of myths about stroke, but I think treat it as an emergency and, uh, you know, and you can make a difference. You know, you, the sooner you get help, you can make a difference in, in your condition. Great. Um, so as you heard from Donna, please familiarize yourself with the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Thank you, Donna, for your time. We appreciate it.